So the September and October NFL public forum topic is resolved. Unilateral military force by the United States is justified to prevent nuclear proliferation. Unlike previous years, using the same topic for the first two months or month and a half, the other big difference is the topic, or two potential topics, one of which was substantially more likely than the other, were announced in June. So some teams have been working on this topic for months and have had a camp on it this summer, whereas other teams are new to it coming into the first day of September. So I'm going to try and have some stuff for people in both situations in here, a little bit of a topic overview, a little bit of an explanation, and a little bit of advanced concepts to people who have spent some time thinking about or debating this topic themselves already. So let's start out with the wording, move on to some overlap with other concepts, other topics, other events, and then move on from there into talking about specific arguments and plans for either side. So, again, unilateral military force by the United States is justified to prevent nuclear proliferation. Unilateral is used as an opposite of multilateral or bilateral, so acting on its own. Literally taken, the U.S. almost never takes a unilateral action. Typically speaking, a contrast that somebody might draw is U.S. military force in Iraq versus U.S. military force in Afghanistan. On the one hand, we had a multinational organization that agreed with us on going in. We went to the U.N. first. We had a coalition that went in with us. On the other hand, we largely did it against which the international community, and those are usually shown as examples of unilateral versus multilateral intervention in the past few years. The trouble is, both of those are technically multilateral, because even in Iraq, we had about 20 other countries in there involved in different ways, even if we sometimes forgot Poland. But it's very rare to press against totally unilateral. And Khan wants to push the narrow definition on this. They want to argue that if nobody else supports it, that if Israel won't back us, if Great Britain won't back us, if Canada won't back us, if the Marshall Islands won't back us, if we can find one other country that's willing to help us, then it should be considered unilateral. Whereas Pro is more likely to argue unilateral means just that we are leading in it, we are the ones who are taking action, we would take action even if other countries didn't, but the fact that they follow us doesn't mean that it wasn't a unilateral action. So for instance, if we act despite the disapproval of the UN Security Council, or we act and a couple countries follow us, but they only follow because we acted, and we wouldn't have acted on we would have acted even if they weren't following, then in that case that would still count as unilateral under Pro's more broad, more permissive definition. Military force is used in the resolution specifically to remove the possibility of talking about, let's say for instance, diplomatic sanctions, but it's also used probably to remove talking about military actions that are not directly forceful, or forceful actions that don't use the military. Defining the words together makes more sense than defining them individually. Military actions that are not necessarily forceful could include a no-fly zone, could include the threat of military action or bringing military troops nearby to observe, but not actually using force. Force but not military could mean covert action, could mean sabotage, by the CIA rather than by the military, so both of those are probably ruled out. By the United States, fairly straightforward, no twists on this one unique to this resolution. Justified is where this starts to get interesting. Because it doesn't say is always justified or is optimal. It is simply asking can there be a justification for this, and this is going to start a lot of framework debates, especially for the pro side. Generally speaking, the concept here is more common in the Lincoln-Douglas debate, but you'll see it in all kinds of debate. It's justification as permissibility. We don't need to argue that we need to do this, that we should always do this. We need to argue that there are situations that exist in which we could do this, and we ought to take advantage of those situations. So we don't need to prove, for instance, on pro, that we always should strike, or that we should strike any country that proliferates, or that we should always do it unilaterally. We just need to prove that there are situations in which, if it were a last resort, it would be good to do, because that shows that it will be justified. There's not too much Khan can say against permissibility that sounds fair. 
If they say, for instance, well, Russia is upgrading its arsenal, therefore we have to strike. That would be saying, well, it's universal. It's not, is it permissible in any situation? It's, is it permissible in all situations? So that's kind of a stretch. The two things that Khan can do in response to this are to say, is justified means now. We're not talking about hypothetical future worst case scenarios. They need to look at one country that's proliferating right now in the status quo and show that we would be justified in intervening militarily to stop that if we wanted to. The other thing that Khan could say is that it's just a question of on balance in the majority of cases if it is justified pro wins. If in the majority of cases it is not, then Khan wins. Again, this has no actual resolutional basis, but by now judges are used to con teams having to do this in certain resolutions just to make them from a statement of fact into a debate. The other thing is prevent. Prevent doesn't necessarily mean completely stop, it doesn't mean minimize, it doesn't mean abolish. It's up for grabs. It can mean a few different things, especially given that to prevent can make it either goals-oriented or results-oriented. This also means that even if the force is justified to prevent nuclear prolif, if the force has other benefits aside from that, if either team wants to get dragged into the nation-building debate or dragged into the secondary kinds of force that will be used after debate, they can certainly do that. Nuclear proliferation doesn't say what kind of proliferation. It doesn't say harmful, peaceful. It doesn't say whether it's vertical or horizontal. It just says proliferation. And part of that, I think, is because otherwise, if it said like proliferation of nuclear weapons, then it would be very hard for pro teams to prove that they were actually proliferating the weapons rather than proliferating the enriched uranium, proliferating the plutonium, proliferating the centrifuges, proliferating the other technologies used for that. So that's probably why that was left vague. So that's the resolutional wording in a nutshell and arguments deriving specifically from that. Let's look at how this overlaps with a couple different events. Obviously, there's a lot of overlap with policy in terms of evidence. You don't want to read policy evidence directly in a public forum round, but there are tons and tons of proliferation backfiles on both sides of the debate and tons and tons of unilateralism versus multilateralism backfiles that will give you authors who you should look up and find cards from for yourselves. Lincoln Douglas has had a topic like this in the past, well, has had several topics like this in the past, but I think the main contribution that Lincoln Douglas will bring to this topic, if you have LD debaters on your squad, is ask them to explain permissibility in more depth to you as a way of judging whether or not something is justified. Do we ensure that it's always the right thing to do, or do we ensure that it's sometimes the only thing that we can do, or somewhere in between? This time there's also a third event as well. IPPF, the International Policy and Public Forum, is a one-shot debate event that happens to have a very similar topic to this one, albeit more strongly worded, so teams planning to enter in that will have resources that you can use. People who are doing this topic should strongly consider doing IPPF just because you'll already have 90% of the groundwork done for you. Okay, so because Pro is talking about permissibility in a lot of rounds on this, they're not arguing that it's always necessary that we have to strike every country that wants to either modernize, expand, or revise its nuclear program. Then they're going to be talking more in terms of specific scenarios where it would be justified rather than broad contentions. Because broad contentions tend to be more cons home court advantage on this topic. For instance, Pro is probably not going to argue that multilateralism is bad and unilateralism is awesome that many rounds. There will be some teams that do it, but most will argue that multilateralism is a luxury we can't afford and that sometimes we need to act unilaterally, rather than that it would be worse if we had the option of acting multilaterally that we took that option. Similarly, they're probably not going to argue that nuclear power or nuclear technology is always bad, or even that countries having nuclear weapons is always bad. They're going to argue that there are specific situations in which countries should not have them because they are unstable, because the governments of those countries are at risk, or because they might give those weapons to terrorists. So generally speaking, PRO is looking more a broad framework followed by scenarios which would trigger that framework. 
So for instance, country X might develop technology Y and give it to unstable dictator Z. Or country A might expand arsenal B and accidentally, with air quotes implied, give that technology to a terrorist group which that country happens to sponsor. So generally speaking, pros are looking for situations where this would be okay, rather than situations where this is universally the best thing to do. Khan, on the other hand, has multiple contentions that can undermine that on any level. They can say, for instance, it's not justified if it has to be unilateral, it's not justified if it's unilateral force, it's not justified by the U.S., it's not justified because proliferation isn't bad. Whether proliferation is good or bad is an impact term debate that Khan can certainly get into, but one that Pro is more concerned with framework than the actual debate itself. Generally speaking, there will be some reason at the end of a round like that why proliferation is good and why proliferation is bad. The trouble with that is that Pro just needs to win that it's bad in some situations and that in those situations we should prevent it, whereas Khan needs to win that it's good in all situations or that the resolution is about all situations instead of some situations. So generally speaking, the Khan team is going to attack multiple places on the topic look for weak links, and pick one of those three or four to emphasize at the end of the debate. Pro is probably going to talk about how we don't really want to do this, but there are situations in which we have to do this. Here are three or four of those situations, and if any one of those is true, you vote for us. And I think that's how a lot of high-level debates on this topic are going to play out, just because to win a direct link turn impact turn to either side's argument from either side, you also need to win that it's universally true rather than simply true in the majority of cases. Again, I realize this has been a very wide look at the topic with some specific framework arguments people who assume certain things have already been taught and some arguments people who are completely new to the topic because again, people range between having heard of this topic three days ago to having heard about this topic four months ago and having done an entire camp on this topic. So if you have more specific questions, feel free to leave a comment on here, feel free to send me a message, feel free to ask me through any other medium you have, and I'll try and do a follow-up with those specific questions. But for now, I just want to put something out there about the topic we'll be debating in the next few months. Check back in for follow-ups. Check back in the first week of October when I'll put something up on the November topic. Thank you all for listening.